Hello and welcome back and today I want to show you exactly how to directly connect your NAS to your machine point to point and therefore completely remove the need for one of these. Not everyone needs a network switch. Some people just want to immediately connect into their network attached storage system and enjoy greater bandwidth speeds like this. This Synology here, which normally arrives with one gigabit ethernet, can be upgraded to 10 gig. And although it's nice to be able to output that 10 gig into a larger switch, so 10 users could enjoy gigabit ethernet theoretically, depending on the storage media you put inside, it has to be said that some users just want to watch the world burn. Some users just want to edit directly on this system, photo, video editing, or large scale, faster performance backups. And that's what this video is about, how to directly connect to your NAS. Now, number one, you are gonna to need to have your NAS already set up. That means setting up your RAID storage there, uh, setting up, uh, putting on the firmware, of course, and setting up the device, creating an account and stuff like that. And we've already done guide videos on that. But the other thing you're gonna to need to make sure you've set up there is a shared storage area. Now, in order to do that, you're going to need to go into the file manager of most NAS brands. Again, I'm looking at a Synology here, but it applies to most brands. Go into the file folder manager, and from there, look for the plus symbol at the top. Again, this is largely the same on most brands out there, and create a shared folder. And make sure that the account that you intend to utilize this system with, because you will still need to create account details, has read and write access to this shared folder area. Now, you have to make sure all of those things are done. Also, where possible, if you are running a NAS that has multiple ethernet ports, Unfortunately, I would say this is gonna be a great deal easier if during the first setup of the device, you are still using a network switch. You are utilizing either a router or a switch when you set the device up the first time. It will make migrating over to a point-to-point -point connection a lot easier there. It's by no means essential. You can set up one of these devices directly point-to-point -point out of the box and download the firmware that you're gonna install on it and do the whole thing locally. You can do all of that without utilizing a switch or a router directly connected to the NAS and it will make things, thing, things complicated and you will have to make sure that the uh, subnet and IP, and for that matter, the whole IP, not just the small subnet, are the same on both of these devices, more on that later on. But once your NAS is set up, whether it is you have another cable going off into a router or switch, or you've got the system completely in this isolated fashion, make sure you've got an ethernet cable connected to your client system and then connect it into the back of the NAS. I will say the majority of the steps I'm gonna go through today are based on a Windows environment, but my colleague Eddie at NAS Compares has done a video for Mac users, which you will find linked in the description below, or YouTube may have handily popped it on the side of the screen for us. But once you've got these connected together, find either one of the two of the following. Number one, find the client app, um, client tool for uh, Synology, QNAP, or any the relevant NAS client tool. In this case, we're looking at Synology, so that'll be Synology Assistant, and scan your local area network. Now, the NAS should appear on that tool, but with a new IP. In most cases, it won't start with the numbers 192. It will start with the numbers 169. Um, that IP means you're accessing it locally there. Now, it isn't always the case. You may be utilizing a static IP that's fixed on your system. We'll talk about that in a moment, but in most cases, the NAS should now appear on that scanning tool under the IP169. Now, if it still doesn't appear, use the tool Advanced IP Scanner. Um, that, that tool, completely free, will allow you to scan your local area network, but you can also adjust the range at the top left of the application to open it up. So you can set it to search the whole local 192.168 IP that most users have in their home or business environment, unless they're advanced and played around with it. But you can also set it to look for the 169 IP as well. Chances are the NAS will appear in one of those areas, but on advanced IP scanner, if there's any conflict or issue accessing it, you'll notice that it will not have an arrow next to it, allowing you to open it up and access it just like you would normally. Now in those cases, what you're gonna to need to do is go into the network adapter settings of your machine, in this case a Windows PC, go into the network adapter settings, go into the properties in the advanced tab and change the IP. Hopefully you're seeing it there on screen, but you're gonna to need to set the IP to match the IP of the NAS there. Again, it may be set to that 192 or 169, but whichever one it is, you're gonna to need to set the IP, but then also make sure you select the right subnet there. It's on exactly the same subnet. And again, the settings you're seeing there on screen, you should be able to pull the majority of the network settings either using advanced IP scanner, which will break down the IP, the subnet, uh, any submask, that sort of stuff, 
or you can utilize uh, the NAS if it's connected to your router to go into the network settings like you normally would. Go into the network adapter settings and it will show not only the network adapter settings for the one that you've got connected to your router and the internet or the network switch I should say, but it will also show the internal network settings there of the secondary port you're running directly into the PC and that will allow you to match those network settings there. Again, you can use IP convict uh, via uh, command line or you can go ahead and just use network connections. Just again, that's available in Windows 7, 8, 10, 11. It's all there. Now, if everything has gone smoothly so far and you might have got lucky and it's just appeared on that IP and you can access it straight away with the first connection, the next step is to map that shared folder that we created right there at the beginning, or you may already have them set up on the NAS. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this. Number one, via the client application, again, Synology, QNAP, Asus, or TerraMaster, whatever, a lot of them have the option to add a mapped network drive, either right-clicking where it allows you to map the drive, or along the top of the client tool, it will tell you there's an option to map a drive there, or list uh, available network drives there. You can either select one of those options and it will list the available drives, whereupon you can right click one of those drives and then assign it to a letter on your system. Again, Windows environment, ever so slightly different for Mac. And once you've right clicked that, you can then bind it to a letter, much like your operating system drive on your PC is traditionally the C drive and an optical drive or an external a USB drive is generally the D drive to start with. You can make sure to set a drive letter that then assigns that network drive on your local machine like it is a normal drive on the system, like a USB drive. And from there, you'll be able to transfer data directly back and forth onto the NAS with reflected changes appearing there on the user interface. However, do keep in mind that if the client app tool you're utilizing doesn't allow you to map that network drive, you are gonna to have to go into the Windows settings. In this case, in my case, I go into my PC or my computer. And then from there at the top, there will be an option to map a network drive there. Again, that will allow you to scan the local area network or directly add the IP and then the shared drive. So in my case, it would have been uh, 192.168.01 slash shared drive dash drive slash uh, two slashes at the beginning as well and that would allow me to map that drive locally to my Windows system manually. Do keep in mind you are going to have to add your security credentials there and if you haven't assigned access to that mapped drive like I mentioned earlier on to that user account you've created you will be given uh, denied access permissions there so make sure that not only is network search enabled which should be by default if you were already find in the nas but also on the nas system make sure that the account you're utilizing has both read and write access to that shared folder now, sometimes you might be using an application that doesn't allow you to utilize mapped network drives. Windows has an odd relationship when it comes to utilizing mapped network drives compared with what it considers local or logical drives. That is drives that are directly connected to the system. And sometimes it will know, depending on the application service you use, that the system, the drive it's accessing is not local. And therefore, to preempt any uh, latency or performance issues, it just won't see the drive or it won't even even interact with the drive. Now, one way to get around that is to take advantage of something called iSCSI or kind of large block raw storage there. Now, we've done a whole video on that. I'll link in the description below. And certain video editing applications just do not play nice with mapped network drives there due to uh, performance issues. And when you're, even though you're accessing the drive in this fashion, it will still treat it like it's running through a network switch. And again, just be preemptive of problems there. So if you are going to use an application, video editing software and suites, which doesn't play with mapped network drives, a simple Google will tell you, that's when you need to look at creating iSCSI raw storage and using things known as iSCSI initiators. There's one native to Windows environments. Mac, you do have to use um, either a paid or third party tool to do that. But again, we've done other videos on that and I'll, I'll link to that below. Now, do I recommend accessing a NAS in this fashion? Honestly, yes, but with an enormous caveat. If you do direct connections like this one, it does allow for a single priority client device to really enjoy high performance connection to the NAS and treat this system as more than just a dumb storage drive for backups. It allows you to utilize this system for raw access and to re, you know, reinvent your workflow, to not you know, kind of simplify any kind of external and middle drives there and remove a lot of the bottlenecks that may be caused by a switch there in the middle. How 
However, I will say that I would recommend this setup alongside another cable in another lower priority port running into a switch or your router. One, because if for some reason your IP changes or there's some issue with the connectivity in the middle, it makes troubleshooting significantly harder. Also, having the system accessible in those two ways also opens the door to something like SMB multi-channel. SMB multi-channel allows you to bond ports that are on the same network wave, the same network IP and subnet to bind them together and share. So if you've got, for example, this connection here at 10 GBE, and you've got a one gig connection into your network switch, which is then going into the system, it opens up the door potentially if you set up the IPs and subnets correctly, greater than 10 gigabit speeds. The same goes if you want to directly attach two 10 GBE connections via say a Thunderbolt adapter into two 10G connections on this, SMB multi-channel will open it up significantly. And for those of you that are considering much more budget and value NAS solutions that are taking advantage of what's known as SFP or fiber 10 GBE connections, you may be wondering how exactly do you directly attach to them given that one end of the cable looks like that and the other end of the system looks like that. Well, you can take advantage of adapters like this one. They start at around 25 quid, depending on their quality, they can go up to about 70 to 80, and these allow you to attach a physical copper cable into this adapter. And this means that more affordable fiber NAS solutions can now be directly connected to your Windows or Mac system. Keep in mind, however, those more value systems often have rather modest CPUs inside and therefore hitting performance highs can be very difficult and fully saturate the 10 GBE. In some cases, it's just simply impossible. But nevertheless, this has been how to directly connect your Mac, uh, your Mac or Windows system directly to your NAS. I know I haven't touched on a lot of Mac stuff. Again, I'll link to Eddie, Eddie's video below where he talks a lot more about that. Again, there's a lot more mucking around, frankly, for you Mac users unfortunately but windows users it's more of a smooth ride i hope you found this video helpful and i'll link to the video i've just filmed prior to this one on the subject of um uh, troubleshooting and resolving any 10 gig ethernet network connection problems but thank you so much for watching i'll try and do a written version of this below as well over on nascompares.com and apart from that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time